My name is Pastor Rick Dykeman. It's my privilege to welcome you to this online worship gathering of Ada Congregational Church, a group of people committed to doing our best to love all, welcome all, and seek justice for all. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we pray that you would experience God's welcome here. As we worship together, we pray that we would glorify God and we would experience grace and beauty and peace. Let's join together in our responsive call to worship. As a deer longs for flowing streams of water, our souls reach out to seek our God. Read with me. Where is our God? In the cleansing of the rain, in the refreshing of a pool, in the predictability of a faucet. With glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, our voices lift toward our God. Where is our God? In the melody of voices raised in concert, in the stillness of silence, in the cacophony of spontaneous praise. As deep calls to deep, we come to worship the living God. Where is our God? In the echoes of our prayers, in the reverence of bowed heads, in the hope of raised faces. The Holy One is with us. Let us pray together. Holy Wisdom, we hear you calling us to gather to hope in your name. Ignite sacred courage in us to proclaim the good news. Inspire a compelling vision of community. Renew our spirit so that we might rejoice in the beauty of your creation and delight in one another. Amen. Praise the one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with a very bread of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out demons with a piercing two-edged sword. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Welcome, friends. Let us pass the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Today, I'm here in the church sanctuary right near our communion table. And you'll see that throughout the last couple of weeks and into summer, we have this special weaving that we are sharing on the table as a tablecloth. This is a weaving that the children helped to make. I think it was almost four years ago, 2018. And we invited families and individuals to bring in a ribbon that meant something about them. So some people brought in ribbons of special color or texture. There were ribbons with sports equipment on them. There were ribbons from travels around the world. There were ribbons with nice words like peace, hope, and love. And we wove them together to remind us how we are connected as followers of Jesus here at Ada Congregational Church. I think of that and how we are connected with our lives and our ideas and our faith. Just last week, many of our friends went on the big trip to the Smoky Mountains and they lived together and hiked together and prayed together. That means they're woven together. This week, some of our middle school friends are going on a retreat at a lake, and they'll spend time together splashing around, having fun, playing games, 
and reading the Bible and learning more about their faith. And that weaves us and connects us together. On a bigger scale, our church is also a part of the world church. And each Sunday we're praying for different countries. Today, we're praying for our brothers and sisters who we are connected to in Italy. Italy is a part of Europe. It's very prominently located. It looks like that boot on the map. And our ministry partners for the United Church of Christ, two of them are the Valdensian Church of Italy and also the Mediterranean Hope Program. Just recently, the Mediterranean Hope Program and a woman named Fiona had a retreat for youth from different parts of Europe. Youth came from different countries and they shared together through a weekend about the troubles that some of the European teenagers and young people face. So they talked together about seeking justice and peace for young people. Italy is right there in the center. And so they have people coming from all different countries and facing many different problems. And so in the name of Christ, they joined together and worked to think about how they can make a more peaceful way of life for the young people who come to their area. It's exciting to think that we are a part of a church family here in Ada, but we are also woven together and a part of a greater church around the world. So let us pray together and echo prayer for our friends in Italy. Dear God, thank you for your love that reaches around the world. Please bless our friends in Italy. Help the youth to find hope. May they make peace. May they live in your love. Amen. And a blessing for our young friends. God made you. God loves you. God cares for you.
Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of John, and in it, Jesus uses an image of sheep and of himself as the shepherd. And he closes this story or this image with one of the verses of scripture that has been most impactful to the way I think of life and especially think of ministry. And that's the verse we'll be focusing on. So hear these words from Jesus. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls out his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Will you join me in prayer? Holy and gracious God, we pray that these words we have heard, these holy words, that they would comfort us, that they would challenge us, and that they would point us to Jesus, the very word of God. Amen. Many of you know that last week, or a week and a half ago now, We brought 51 friends from church, 19 different households, including 17 middle and high schoolers. We brought them all to the Smoky Mountains and to Hocking Hills State Park in Ohio. And we went and we had a glorious trip. But it's more than just a trip. We don't go on these things just for the mountains or for the beautiful lodging. We go because we are created to experience retreats. We're created to experience community and beauty and wonder and adventure and even take risks, physical risks. We, we jumped off a rock into an old swimming hole in the big creek on the eastern end of the Smokies. And we don't do that to be silly or ridiculous. We do that because when we stretch ourselves, when we open ourselves up, whether it's physically, whether it's an adventure, whether it's climbing 11 miles, 3,000 feet of elevation gain and standing on the summit of Mount LeConte or whatever summits you've stood on. Those are beautiful experiences, literally mountaintop experiences. And we need those. Teens, yes. Kids, yes. But also those of us are a little older. We need those mountaintop experiences. We need retreats. Why? Well, many of us if not all of us, can get into our routine. We can get stuck and we do the same thing over and over and over and it can become numbing. It closes us off maybe from who we were created to be, from the community we were created to be part of. And instead, we just get hyper-focused on our task list, on earning and saving 
so that we can retire someday and and have a great life. But here in John 10.10, Jesus says, I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. Other translations say, or have it to the full. Our theme last spring was full to the brim. What does it mean for us to be filled up? Full to the brim, abundant, full life. Well, we have all sorts of different definitions for that. Some of us, it might mean marriage, kids, retirement, security, a great job. None of those are bad things. They can all be great things. But what is this abundant life that Jesus talks about? And to take it a step further, why do we go away? Why do we take groups of people, whether it's a women's retreat at the Dominican Center or a huge intergenerational retreat in the Smoky Mountains? Or tomorrow, if you're watching this on Sunday, tomorrow we take a whole bunch of middle schoolers to the Rixie's Cottage and we'll have fun. But it's more than fun. It's deep meaning. It's real life. So what does that look like? You'll have a chance in the coming months to hear from some of the folks who are on those retreats as they share their experiences. But I get to go first. And so I'm going to share some things. Two weeks ago, we stood in the church parking lot We loaded up the vans, and as we have done every trip since I've been here 15 years, I don't know how many that is, more than 100 retreats, more than 150 potentially, every one of them we have taken a picture on the playground equipment. Whoever's there, whether it's middle schoolers or fifth graders or friends who are 75, we get by the playground equipment and we take a picture. There's nothing sacred about that picture but there's beauty in it. We start with a before picture, and then we take an after picture, and we take lots of during pictures. And we can point back to, remember that group we were? Remember who we were when we met in the parking lot? We had freshman guys who hadn't really ever hung out a whole lot with the older kids, freshman girl who was just getting plugged in. We have families that didn't really know each other. They may have seen each other in the fellowship hall or across the the aisle in the pews for worship, but they'd never hung out. They'd never hiked or shared experiences. And so we take that picture in the parking lot and we gather in a big circle and we, we say our names. We introduce each other to each other. Because the community matters. Because our name, our identity matters. And then I shared a few quotes, a few scriptures, laying out what I think that week might look like. I have a fair amount of experience over the last 25 years of leading retreats. So I have an idea of what it could be, what might come about. But you never know. Every group is different. Every time we gather in that parking lot, it's the first time that group has ever gathered there. And we don't know how that will play out. We don't know what God has in store for us as we start the week. But I read a few quotes. I'd like to share them with you today. One, I don't know the author. I would love to give credit. It's a beautiful quote. We've used it on lots of our times together. But it talks about risk. And in that parking lot, we talked about, we're going to go out of our comfort zone this week. We're going to stretch ourselves and stretch each other. And so this quote says, to laugh is to risk appearing the fool. To weep is to risk appearing sentimental. 
To reach out for another is to risk involvement. To expose our feelings is to risk exposing your true self. To place your ideas or your dreams before the crowd is to risk their loss. To love is to risk not being loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure. But risks must be taken because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing does nothing, has nothing, and is nothing. They might avoid suffering and sorrow, but they simply cannot learn or feel or change or grow or love, even live. Chained by their certitudes, they are a slave. They have forfeited their freedom. Only a person who risks is free. And so we talk about literally in the parking lot. Look, we're going to spend a bunch of days together. And I invite you to take risks. Not ridiculous, stupid risks. But risks. Open yourself up. Give yourself space to be your authentic self, who you are, who God loves, who you've been created to be. Not the facade and the posing and who you've presented yourself to be. Not your best pictures with perfect lighting. No, just yourself, who you are, riding in a van for a whole bunch of hours, and then experiencing life together, sharing life together. That involves risk. And so we talk about opening up ourselves. And then on the second day, we talked about how full life, real life, abundant life, isn't just about toxic positivity. Sometimes that real life has lament reasons to lament. Friends who are struggling with cancer. Relatives who have passed away. Things going on in our world and our community and our country where we say, God, how long is it going to be this way? God, we're tired. Why? But abundant life doesn't end with a lament. We move through lament. One third of the Psalms, the songs, the lyrics of the Bible are songs of lament, but many of those end with, God, why? And then it shifts to God, I don't understand, but I trust you. You have been faithful. Lead me forward. And so we take the next step. We talked about on this retreat how being in creation is a beautiful thing. And it doesn't have to be on a retreat. It can be your front yard, your backyard. It could be going to a park, walking through the woods, sitting in the grass and watching the little life take place in front of you. One of the quotes we shared was from George Washington Carver, who said, I like to think of nature as an unlimited broadcasting station through which God speaks to us every hour, if only we tune in. I'll read it again. I like to think of nature as an unlimited broadcasting station through which God speaks to us every hour, if we only tune in. Now, for some of our younger friends on this retreat, I had to explain what a broadcasting station was. Think of it like Netflix. Or the internet. But we don't know what's there if we're not tuned in. And sometimes when we get away, when we get outside of our routine, we we tune in. We have eyes and ears to experience, oh God, thank you for today. When we hike in the mountains, or we sit along a waterfall, or we journal in a hammock, 
or we sit on our porch, or we share coffee with a friend or loved one. Sometimes we tune in, all the way in, and we experience God. So what more does this abundant life hold or entail? Well, I think it's about community. We are not created for isolation. That doesn't mean we have to be surrounded by people all of the time. Many of us don't get a full bucket by being in large crowds for extended periods of time. So we give each other space, but but community, fellowship matters. The Christian life is not one of isolation. It's one of community. And community is sticky and hard and has conflict. And that's part of life. But how do we do that well? Well, it involves trust. It involves authenticity. It takes risk. It takes great courage to be yourself. To speak up for what you need. And it takes the group. Having trust and care for one another to listen when someone says or shares who they are or what they need. So it's community. It's fellowship. Leo Buscaglia wrote, Too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. It's the littlest things, but it's creating space where you can be yourself, where we can trust each other and love each other. And it involves discipleship. Luella B. Cook says, we live and we learn as much by unconscious absorption and in imitation as by systemic effort. We like to think that we grow because we're working at it. But we're much more apt to move in a direction because of who we're around. It's, it's unconscious, it's imitation, it's absorption. And so when we create a beautiful community, it, it changes everyone involved. It's beautiful. One final quote from Maury Schwartz. Maury writes, so many people walk around with a meaningless life. They seem half asleep even when they're busy doing things they think are important. This is because they are chasing the wrong things. The way you get meaning into your life, Maury Schwartz says, is to devote yourself to loving others. Devote yourself to your community around you. Devote yourself to creating something that gives you purpose and meaning. How many of us spend so much time where we're basically half asleep, even though we're so busy doing the things that we have deemed important, but we're chasing the wrong things. We're not experiencing deep meaning and purpose. We're just running. And so how do we focus more on on loving all, on welcoming all, on seeking justice for all, on loving God with, with our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength? Everything we have, we love God. And Jesus then added, and we love others. That is abundant life, and it is hard, and it takes others around us. But when we build that, when we experience it, oh, it's so good, so deeply meaningful, full, abundant life. May we experience all that God has for us by tuning in to that broadcasting station of creation. 
May we experience the full life that God has for us by opening ourselves up, by being our authentic selves, sharing ourselves and our gifts with a trusting and caring and authentic community. Oh, friends, may this church community, this family, may we be that for one another and for our community and for the world. Jesus came that we might have life and have it to the full. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Holy and gracious God, we thank you for creating us to experience full and abundant life. We thank you for surrounding us with a church family, a community committed to loving all and welcoming all and seeking justice for all, doing our best to care for one another, We pray that we would go deep, that we would provide that care. When when folks are hurting, that we would be there for them to listen, to help. When folks have needs, that, that we would respond. Where there is injustice, that we would work for things to be made right for individuals, and for systems in our society. God, we thank you for your love. We pray that we might share that love with the world around us. And God, we take these moments to pray specifically for some in our church family. We're thankful and we celebrate Joan Vanderplug, who celebrates a significant birthday today. God, we pray for our friend Ben Rudance and the whole Rudance family as as he has learned that he has cancer and as he and his family are leaning into that difficult journey to get healthy once again. God, we pray that Ben and the Rodarts family would experience full life today and in the coming days. And God, there are so many others on our hearts, in our thoughts. And we pause in this prayer to lift them up to you. God, we pray for our local church that we might be a beacon of your light and your hope and your peace and your justice. God, we pray for our 
community. Where there is conflict, we pray that you would bring peace. Where there is beauty, we pray that it might shine. And God, in our state, in our nation, there is so much, so much hurt, so much distrust, so much. And it seems like some of the foundations are shaking. And God, we pray that we might see you, that we might look to you in the midst of things swirling around that that we would see you, that we would work again for your love, for your light, for beauty in this world, that we would care for the folks who seem to be valued the least, who are pushed aside to the margins, who are ostracized, who are blamed. God, your son worked so hard for those people went to, sat with, cared for those people. We pray that we might have the same heart as Jesus. And God, as we move into this summer season, as people travel, as people wander, we pray that that we would see you in the beauty of, that your broadcast station would be something that we are tuned into. God, we pray for the middle school retreat that leaves tomorrow. May they experience joy and wonder and fun and community, authentic community. God, we pray that your shalom, your peace would come on earth as it is in heaven even as we pray the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, as you go, receive this benediction, these good words. May you experience the abundant and full life that Jesus promised. May you experience joy and beauty and peace this week. Love well. Grace and peace, friends.